Hi, we're going to look at spherical coordinates, which is another way to extend polar coordinates to three dimensions. So we already looked at cylindrical coordinates, which is one way to extend polar coordinates to three dimensions. And remember, in cylindrical coordinates, you're using essentially polar coordinates in the xy direction and then rectangular coordinates in the z direction. With spherical coordinates, we're really going to do more of a full extension of polar coordinates to three dimensions. So we'll use the idea of angles of rotation and radii, but in all of the three dimensions, not just parallel to the xy plane. Okay, so in spherical coordinates, we have ordered triples, uh, just like in the other coordinate systems, and it's important to know what the values in the ordered triple stand for. So the first value in the ordered triple is uh, this thing that looks like a P. It's actually a lowercase rho. Uh, which is a lower case Greek letter R, and that represents a radius from the origin, uh, but that's really in all directions. So that's a radius outward in all directions from the origin. Remember when we did cylindrical coordinates, we used R for radius, but that was just parallel to the xy plane. So when I want to think about uh, different row values, we're thinking about coming out from the origin in all directions, not just parallel to the xy plane. So you can maybe see this is sort of how the idea of spherical coordinates gets its name. If you go out a constant radius from the origin, you get a sphere. All right, the second letter in this ordered triple is phi, or sometimes you might hear that pronounced phi. Uh, and that represents an angle of rotation downward from the positive z-axis. And one word of caution here, our textbook uses the ordered triple rho phi theta. Some texts use rho theta phi. So if you look at other textbooks or if you look at other videos online, you'll want to make sure that you pay attention to what order they're doing those ordered triples in. Unfortunately, that is not standard, like we standardize x, y, z, and r theta and things like that. But in spherical coordinates, it's not standard the order in which these things are given. But our textbook uses phi for the second coordinate. So if we think about an angle of rotation from the positive z axis downward, and that's downward in all directions, uh, so sort of like a flower opening up here. Or if you kind of think about it um, really like drawing these lines, it would be these different angles of phi. Uh, you can think about this sort of like a cone. Uh, rotated down from the origin. So this picture I drew here is would be for a phi value that's fairly small. So maybe a 30 degree rotation or we really should probably be thinking in radians maybe about a pi over 6 rotation downward from the positive z-axis. Notice that if you rotate farther down from the positive z-axis, say pi over 2, down from the positive z-axis, you actually end up in the xy plane. Uh, if you open up even more, so if you rotate through an angle larger than pi over 2, then you're going to end up below the xy plane. So we'll end up down here. We'll look at some examples later where we look at specific values of phi. And then if you rotate all the way down, from the positive z-axis down to the negative part of the z-axis, that would be a rotation of pi. Um, so remember when we did cylindrical coordinates, we talked about that we really didn't need negative radii and we really didn't need all of the possible values for angles. We only need a certain range of values for the angles. So that's true also in spherical coordinates. You really only need rho values that are greater than or equal to zero to cover every radius from the origin. And really only need phi going from zero to pi. Uh, radians to get from the positive z-axis down to the negative part of the z-axis. All right, so the last coordinate in these ordered triples for our textbook is theta. You have to be a little bit careful with your handwriting. Notice that the Greek letter phi and the Greek letter theta look an awful lot alike. So you have to be careful with your handwriting to make sure you don't get them mixed up. That's a really common mistake that students make. Uh, theta is in our textbook defined um, in the same way that theta is defined in cylindrical coordinates. So that's really an angle of rotation from the positive 
xz, positive x part of the xz plane toward the um, positive y part of the yz plane. All right, so just like in a uh, cylindrical coordinate, so in both in the xy plane and parallel to the xy plane. So we're rotating from the positive xz plane toward the yz plane, positive part yz plane. So this is like the door on its hinge that we talked about. And just like in, so this is similar, really this is the same as what we used in cylindrical coordinates. And um, so, just like in cylindrical coordinates, I don't need all values of theta to cover all of our three. I really just need theta values that are between 0 and 2 pi. And I don't really need both of 0 and 2 pi because theta equals 0 would keep you in the positive xz plane and theta equals 2 pi would bring you right back to the same place. Um, all right, so uh, one other word of caution. I mentioned that not all textbooks do the ordered triples in the same order. Some textbooks do rho, theta, phi. So you just need to pay attention to that if you're looking at some other sources. The other unfortunate thing is that some textbooks define phi to be the angle that we call theta, that's a rotation in the xy plane, and they call theta the angle that we call phi, that's rotated down from the positive z axis. So uh, unfortunately, that is not standardized, and so you have to think, you have to pay attention to the context, so not standard order, and not standard what they call phi and what they call theta. Uh, I like that our textbook uses theta the same as we use for cylindrical coordinates, so that makes it a little easier to think about. Um, but I'm just, one word of caution, if you look at other textbooks, make sure that you pay attention to what's going on with that. Okay, so we're gonna look at some examples where we plot some points uh, that are given to us in spherical coordinates. So we'll go ahead and set up a coordinate system all of the radii, uh, the row values in these are three or less, so we're gonna go ahead and scale off three units forward and backwards on all of the coordinate axes. Okay, so remember when we've got spherical coordinate points that these are given rho, phi, theta. All right, so it doesn't really matter which one you think about first. I tend to like to think about phi and theta first, and then I worry about my radius. Um, so whatever order you want to do it in, as long as you do them correctly, you should end up at the same point. So. All right, so for point A, uh, I want to rotate down an angle of pi over 2 from the positive z-axis. So that's in all directions, but when I rotate down an angle of pi over 2 from the positive z-axis, I end up in the xy plane. So this point A is going to be in the xy plane. And then once I'm there, uh, I'm going to rotate around an angle of pi over 4. So I'm going to rotate from the positive x-axis toward the positive y-axis, pi over 4. And then once I'm there, I'm going to go out a radius of 2 units along that angle. So I'm going to think about coming out 2 units. I just used my scale that's on my x and y axes to kind of estimate what 2 units would be. So my point A would be where I rotated down pi over 2, around pi over 4, and then come out rho equals 2 units from the origin. Okay, so I went ahead and erased some of those lines so that we can do some of these other points on here and not get our graph too crowded. All right, so for point B, you might notice that the angles are really just swapped around. So the point of looking at these two is really just to kind of compare and contrast how the phi and theta act when you plot these points. Okay, so I would like to do the phi first. So I think about from the positive z-axis, I'm going to rotate down pi over 4. So that puts me on a cone that's pi over 4 radians rotated down from the positive z-axis, like a flower opening up. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to rotate around pi over 2. So from the positive xz plane, I'm going to rotate around pi over 2. So that one will put me in the yz plane. Once I rotate around that theta value of theta equals pi over 2. And then once I'm there, I'm going to come out from the origin 
two units out from the origin. So I'm just making a line out from the origin. I'm using a scale of two units, estimating that from the scale on my axes there. All right, so we get a point here, B, that's in the YZ plane. All right, so I erased some of those lines again so we can kind of think about where uh, these other points are and not everything ends up so messed up. All right, so for point C, we're going to start on the positive Z axis. I'm going to do phi first, and I'm going to rotate down pi radians. So from the positive z axis down to the negative part of the z axis is what that phi equals pi is going to give us. So this point C here is on the negative part of the z axis. So we rotated down pi, so we're on the negative part of the z axis. Then I'm on that axis and I rotate around pi over 4. That will keep me on that axis, on that negative part of the z axis. And then I want to go down 3 units. So I'm just thinking about a scale and going down 3 units there. So that point C is on the negative part of the z axis, just really 3 units below the xy plane. So like we did with the cylindrical coordinate system, we might notice here that when uh, phi is pi, that's going to put you on the negative part of the z axis no matter what theta is. So any theta value puts us at the same location on the negative part of the z axis, 3 units below the xy plane. All right, so let's look at this next one here. So point D, if I do my phi equals pi over 2, again, that puts me down into the xy plane, whether I rotate from the positive z axis in the xz plane or in the yz plane. Uh, so this point D here is, again, in the xy plane. Like our first point, we have that phi value of pi over 2 that puts us down in the xy plane. And then our theta value is 0, so I'm not going to rotate any at all from the positive x-axis. So this one's on the positive x-axis. And then we're just going to go out 2 units from the origin, so that point D is there on the positive x-axis, two units out from the origin. All right, one last point to do here. So uh, I'm going to do my phi first. So that phi is 0, which means we're not going to rotate down at all from the positive z-axis. So this one is on the positive z-axis. And then again, just like point C, when we are on the negative part of the z-axis, no matter what that theta is, as I rotate around but I'm stuck on that positive z-axis, uh, whether I am at theta equals 0 or pi over 2 or pi over 4, I'm still going to be on that positive z-axis. So that's going to be true no matter what that theta is. And then once I'm on that positive z-axis, I'm going to go out 2 units from the origin. So that one's up 2 units above the origin in the positive uh, on the positive z-axis. All right, we're going to look at uh, graphs of a few very simple surfaces in spherical coordinates. It's handy to sort of recognize these so that you can see when you're doing an integration problem and your limits of integration are going to be constant uh, if you have these kinds of surfaces here. All right, so this first one, we actually kind of already talked about that. This is rho, which represents a radius from the origin. So this is all the points that are radius 3 units from the origin. So this is where the name spherical coordinates gets its name. So that's just a sphere of radius 3 centered at the origin. So it's just all the points on the surface of that sphere. Just a little rough sketch there. All right, these next three are phi equals constant. So we actually kind of talked about that also. Uh, this is when you can think about rotation down from the positive part of the z-axis, like a flower opening up. You want to think about in all directions. These equations don't have any restrictions on theta or rho. So we want to think about uh, from the positive z-axis, I rotate down pi over 6 in all directions. So what I end up with there is a cone and the angle that that cone forms with the positive z axis is pi over 6. So that little angle in there. So the surface though would be that cone uh, that's kind of steep there around and goes up the z axis. All right, this next one, when I rotate down phi equals pi over 2, we're going to end up in the xy plane. We talked about that when we first talked about what phi is. So phi equals pi over 2 is kind of the one exception, uh, one of a couple exceptions, I guess, to the idea that phi equals a constant is a cone. 
Uh, for this one, it's like a cone that's flattened all the way out. This one really is just the xy plane when phi equals pi over 2. And then this next one, so we've rotated through some angle that's bigger than pi over 2 from the positive part of the z-axis. So we've rotated through this angle of 3 pi over 4 down here below the xy plane and in all directions. So that one is also going to be a cone, but that one's a cone on the bottom part of the z-axis here. So that would be a phi angle of 3 pi over 4 from the positive z-axis down to the side of that cone. All right, and then this last one, remember that theta is just like it is in cylindrical coordinates. So for this last one that's here, this is really just like we did in cylindrical coordinates. You can think about this like a door on a hinge. So we're at theta equals zero when you're in the positive xz plane. And then as you rotate through an angle of pi over three, so maybe a little more than that, rotate through an angle of pi over three, you'll end up over here. So theta equals pi over three is this plane that contains the z-axis. Okay, the last thing to talk about in this video is some conversion formulas, converting between cylindrical and spherical coordinates and converting between rectangular and spherical coordinates. So I have a diagram here. I'm going to just label some things on this diagram to sort of help think about what we're doing. So the key idea is that I have this point here. I'll just label that point P. And that same point could have XYZ coordinates. It could also have coordinates in cylindrical coordinates and it could also have coordinates in spherical coordinates. It's just a matter of what coordinate system I use to describe that location. Uh, so I put some arrows on this diagram and kind of shaded in something to sort of look like a plane so we can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, but if I think about XYZ coordinates for this point, I would come out from the origin X units and then I would go parallel to the Y axis Y units and then up Z units. So I'm going to add a few lines to this. Uh, so I would have X and then this would be Y and then the Z would go up. And it's kind of hard to see but we know that our X and Y axes are at right angles to each other. So these two sides of that triangle that I just drew right there uh, are perpendicular to each other. Um, all right, and so I've got this X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate. Uh, so I can think about that point as X, Y, Z. And then if I think about cylindrical coordinates, I would have an R and a theta and a Z. So the Z is going to be the same. Uh, the R would be a radius out from the origin, so but parallel to the X, Y plane or in the X, Y plane. So I just darken that in red there, that side that's in the X, Y plane. Uh, that would be our R value. The theta would be a rotation from the positive x-axis toward the positive y-axis. So that's that angle on that little triangle in the xy plane. So there's a little triangle here in the xy plane that has uh, sides of length x and y and then the hypotenuse is r. So there's some Sokotoa relationships there that are really the conversions between polar and rectangular coordinates. So cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse or if I solve that for the side x that would be adjacent then I have x equals r cosine theta and sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. If I solve that for the opposite side which would be y I have r sine theta. All right, so that gives me some relationships in the xy plane and then remember that in cylindrical coordinates your z is the same in rectangular coordinates as it is in cylindrical coordinates. All right, and then we want to get some conversions between those and spherical coordinates which is what we're working on now. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. We've got the same theta as before. So that same theta that I have labeled in red there would be the same theta for spherical coordinates. And then I have another triangle here that is in uh, this plane that I've kind of shaded turquoise here. Uh, and one side of that triangle here, that would be our rho value. That's that radius outward from the origin toward that point. And then that R, the side of that triangle that's labeled R, that's in the XY plane. And then Z is going straight up from the XY plane. So that side R that's labeled R and that side that's labeled Z, those would form a right triangle right there. 
So this angle right here rotated down from the positive z axis would be phi. Uh, and then I have some, I have really two of the same triangles here. So that angle phi that's from the positive part of the z axis is also inside the triangle the same as that angle that's there. So we're going to use this other right triangle that's in my plane that I've shaded blue here to find some relationships between uh, our coordinate systems. So in this triangle, uh, I'm going to have sine phi is opposite. So the side that's opposite of that is R over hypotenuse. So um, that's the row, the hypotenuse of the triangle is row. If I solve that for R, I get R equals rho sine phi. So that's one of the conversion formulas between cylindrical and spherical coordinates. I can get another relationship by using that same triangle and writing cosine phi is adjacent. The adjacent side on that triangle is Z over the hypotenuse, which is rho. And so if I solve that relationship for z, I get z equals rho cosine phi. So that gives me some relationships between cylindrical uh, to spherical. So I've got um, theta is the same theta. Uh, and r is rho sine phi. And z is rho cosine phi. We can also use Pythagorean theorem uh, for that right triangle and you can see that r squared plus z squared equals rho squared on that right triangle. Okay, so uh, then we want some conversion formulas that get us from uh, rectangular to spherical coordinates and back and forth. So I actually can just use some of what I already have here. All right, so if I start with this relationship that I have between uh, cylindrical and rectangular coordinates, so I have x equals r cosine theta, and then I use the relationship that I have up here, uh, r equals rho sine phi, and substitute into that, I get x equals rho sine phi cosine theta. All right, so I really want a relationship between rectangular and spherical, so I'm going to erase that middle part there. All right, so there's our x conversion formula. And if I do the same thing for y, so I'm going to start, start with y equals r sine theta, and then I'm going to substitute in place of the r, uh, this relationship that we have up here, uh, r equals rho sine phi, so rho sine phi sine theta. Okay, and again, what I really want is the relationship between rectangular and spherical, so I'm going to erase that step in the middle that used cylindrical coordinates. Okay, so there's two of our equations, and then for our z equation, uh, we actually already have that up above from the right triangle uh, that we did before, so we have z equals rho cosine phi. There's also one other thing here, if you just think about the definition of rho, uh, remember that rho is a distance from the origin. So this is basically just distance formula in three dimensions. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared. So these, um, just like the ones for polar coordinates you know without having to draw a right triangle to think about those, these conversion formulas from rectangle to spherical coordinates, you want to make sure you know those. I think it's easier to just memorize them than it is to try to reconstruct this triangle and reconstruct them every time. Uh, it's easy, there's a lot of angles, phi's and theta's and sine's and cosine, so it's a little bit easy to get them mixed up, but it will be important that you know that conversion formula from rectangular to spherical coordinates. All right, there is one last thing to talk about when we're ready to do integration in spherical coordinates, uh, and that takes a little bit of effort to kind of think about what that is, but we need to think about what the dv is. So we're going to think about that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to attempt to draw a little picture here of what would be a spherical, a piece of a spherical partition. Uh, there are some pictures in your textbook as well that are probably a little bit better than I can draw here. Uh, but if I have a region in R3 and I partition that using a spherical partition, and I want to think about the volume of one of those slices. So when we think about a spherical partition, we would chop it up into pieces where the pieces are along constant row values, constant theta, and constant 
fee values. So it's kind of like a box except the sides, some of the sides of that are curved. I have two sides here uh, that are curved along different spheres in different directions. All right, so one of the sides of this box uh, is really just the difference in two radii. So that's the difference in two different radii. Uh, I have another side here uh, that is along an arc of a circle. And so we did this when we did uh, cylindrical, actually when we did polar coordinates, we talked about that as an arc of a circle. Uh, so that arc of that circle there, a rho times a delta angle here, so radius times a delta angle, and that it would be different angles that are in different phi directions. The third side of my box, which uh, would not be in the surface of our paper, but would be coming out from the surface of our paper, is also a curved side here. And this is like what we did before. Uh, this is really the R bar delta theta. Um, but if I want to convert to cylindrical coordinates, remember that we have R is rho sine phi. So this could be in spherical coordinates written as rho k sine phi k and the average of those delta theta k. So when I think about the volume of that box and that piece in the partition here, uh, I'm going to have my delta rho, which is the change in the radius, one dimension, and then times the other dimension, rho times delta phi. And then the third side is uh, rho sine phi delta theta. All right, and those are all multiplied, so I'm going to rearrange the multiplication a little bit right there. Okay, so the main idea is then when I take the limit as the norm of that partition approaches zero, and then in our integration, our differential is going to come from this. So we're going to have rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. All right, and so that's important to know as well. So all of these things that I'm highlighting right here, these conversion formulas between rectangular and spherical coordinates, you need to make sure that you have those memorized.